We have been uh, urging the local zoo to allow an elephant expert or two of them or three of them or four of them to come into the zoo and examine Lucy. And the zoo has adamantly refused. However, with this press conference, September 17th, looming on the horizon, apparently the zoo has desperately brought in what they describe as a consultant to examine Lucy. Now this consultant's name is Ooster Hauser or Ooster High or some, what? I'm not sure if he's in, what is it? Ooster what? Heiss. Heiss? Ooster Heiss. I have heard of him, and I've heard remarks about him, a derogatory, I might add. However, we have the good fortune of having Julie Woodyard here, who, who knows of this gentleman, and has, has researched him. And before we go any further, I'm going to ask Julie to come up here to the microphone and tell, tell you about this so-called consultant that the zoo brought in. Julie, if you please. Incidentally, uh, Julie is one of the most dedicated and most knowledgeable animal rights activists with whom I have ever worked. And uh, I work with the best. Here's Julie. Thank you very much. Bit Yes, first off, I, I really need to take this opportunity to thank all of you um, for taking up our invitation to come up here and help us with Lucy. This is really important to us. Without your expertise and Bob, without all of your great assistance in getting Lucy's plate to the top of all of this, to the country's attention, this never would have happened. So this is really important, and I thank you all for that. But more importantly, and down to the point, um, Yes, I've researched Dr. Ooster Heiss. He, uh, his name is not new to the Valley Zoo, first of all. I should say that he's not being brought in here for the first time as any kind of independent veterinarian. He, in fact, has been involved with the zoo all along and has had a relationship with him for quite a long time. Um, Dr. We weren't surprised at all, of course, when they brought him in. He is notorious, and not in a good way. He's notorious for helping facilities um, that have, are keeping elephants in neglectful and abusive situations, and he helps them to justify keeping the animals in that environment. And I'm gonna give you some very specific examples because I think it's really important you understand what I'm talking about. So first off, um, Dr. Oosterheis was the senior vet of record at the San Diego Wild Animal Park when an elephant by the name of Dunda was being beaten in the head. And I'm going to describe to you what happened and then his comments around that at an animal cruelty hearing. Um, Dunda, five keepers, chained Dunda by all four legs, dragged her to the ground, and beat her with axe handles systematically over two days. Two days. This is severe animal abuse. In the hearings related to this, Dr. Oosterheis said, it is acceptable to strike an elephant in the head. In my view, it is an appropriate and non-harmful place to administer required discipline. So obviously, in his mind, dragging an elephant to the ground, beating it in the head with axe handles systematically for two days is appropriate discipline, and beating the elephant in the head is completely appropriate. You know, I think that's glaring on its own, but the story goes on. Um, he's done a lot of work for a particular circus that is very well known, uh, have had numerous charges of animal abuse, particularly with respect to elephants, and in fact have been convicted. Uh, the first interaction that I have noted here was with respect to two circus elephants by the name of Joyce and Happy, and they were ill, and they called, the circus called in Dr. Oosterheis, and he said he diagnosed them as healthy and able to perform. Within days, those animals died from tuberculosis. The necropsy report showed they had less than 20% lung capacity at the time when he was diagnosing them healthy and able to perform. The story goes on. Same circus, a few years later. This time, they're facing 47 counts of animal abuse relating to the lack of care of their elephants and abuse of those elephants. 
and he was involved in that. He was a senior uh, vet on record with the circus at the time, and they were ultimately convicted of 19 counts of animal abuse just relating to those incidents of elephants. And on we go. Then there's Delhi. She was seized by the USDA. Um, specifically, the wording in the USDA report was, for being kept in unrelieved suffering and in imminent danger of dying as a result of that suffering. Dr. Oosterhuis, one month prior to the USDA seizing these animals and, and making these statements, said that the circus, in fact, should be commended for their care of Delhi. More on this issue, and in fact, I'm being flooded right now with emails from people around the world who saw the news about Oosterhuis offering an opinion on Lucy and all of those people are saying, but you do know this guy's notorious for working for people who abuse their elephants. But So the story's going to go on for a long time. You can see that there's a theme in all of this. As far as we're concerned, there has been no independent review of Lucy's health. We don't accept that. We would like to see a team of experts brought in. And when Lucy is well enough, we expect her to be moved. That was great news this morning, um, Bob, about them not keeping elephants here any longer. And of course, the law will require them to move Lucy as soon as she is healthy enough to do that. So we're very excited about that. And Kim, I wonder if you could just cue that video, because I just want to show you one short video. And this is important because, as you all know, when you go out to the zoo, they take Lucy out into the field, and they show you her in an environment where she's, she appears to have some freedom, although she's constantly under the control and threat of the bulldog. But appears to have some freedom out on those grassy areas and so on. But this, this is where Lucy lives more than 90% of her time inside that enclosure, and a vast majority of that is inside this barn, doing stereotypic behavior. I know that the zoo has come up with their buzzword about it being anticipatory behavior, but I'm sure that Dr. Poole will be able to address what is normal elephant behavior, and I tell you it is not what Lucy is exhibiting in most of these films. Furthermore, of course, the, she's only walked when she's able to, for if she's healthy enough and feeling well enough to, because of course she's arthritic, and also, um, she's not walked during inclement weather for obvious reasons. This is a very cold climate here in Edmonton. And f I went through the keeper records for 2008. And during that time, 63 days out of the year, she never even made it out of the enclosure. So this idea that she's walked every day, and these are really long walks, and it's a long period of time. I mean, you all know, you're from Edmonton. It's cold in the winter here. And this is an arthritic elephant. So that's why, no matter what, we are not going to stop. We will keep moving forward with this campaign. We will continue to escalate it until proper expertise is brought in to get Lucy's health up to a stage where she can be moved, and then she's moved. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you've uh, given us a, a wonderful background on uh, Dr. Boosterheiser, but uh, what have Milton Ness, is he not the doctor uh, at the zoo on staff? Yes, that's right. Now, isn't his background, he is actually a small animal uh, a doctor, is he not? Yes, that's correct. And the only elephant that he has ever treated is Lucy. As far as I understand, yes, that's correct. So he's actually getting on-the-job training at Lucy's expense. Yes. Well, let's do that, too. And uh, Oosterheiser is certainly not confidence-inspiring. Now.